So recently I uploaded a video on my channel where I talked about what are some of the most important things to learn if you are willing to become a backend engineer. That was the part one of the video where I talked about interesting things around communication protocols, what frameworks to choose and what not. And this is the part two as you guys requested. I got a lot of comments in the comment section that we should release the part two as soon as possible. So here we are. In this particular video, I'm going to talk about some more interesting things that I believe are super crucial if you want to become a backend engineer and if you want to start a career in backend technologies altogether. So without any further ado, let's just start. But before starting the video, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and do hit that subscribe button so that you never miss a video then that we are going to put on this particular channel. So let's just start. So before moving forward in the video, I have an important announcement for you. So if you're somebody who is actually willing to learn advanced backend technologies, then this is going to be the right platform for you. So at AlgoCamp, we have launched our new flagship Lambda 4.0 Advanced Live Backend Development Batch in which you are going to learn advanced backend technologies including Fastify, ExpressJS, AWS, Mongo, DynamoDB and whatnot. This is going to be a power packed course in which we are going to take you from the very scratch, very basics of backend technologies to the very advanced level by building a lot of interesting projects. We are going to build projects like Code Sandbox Clone. We are going to build streaming app, which, which will include recorded movie streaming plus live streaming as well. We are going to make applications like Booking.com backend, which is going to help you understand transactional capabilities, integrations of payment gateways and many more. All the important projects that we are going to cover in the course is going to be listed here and this is going to be an absolute live course where we are going to take live classes, right? And in these live classes, we are going to do hands-on coding experience to learn all the important advanced backend technologies. You already know that backend is something that every important application needs and you can actually excel your software engineering career with these backend tech in the Node.js stack. So what are you waiting for? All the important links, the complete syllabus, curriculum, all the details of the course is present in the description section below. You can use the coupon code coming up here to get maximum discount off on the current price. I'm really excited for the course. I hope you guys are too. And now let's get back to the video. Now, in backend technologies, I believe apart from business logic, one of the most and the key important things that goes around is the database aspect. You need to be very thorough around your database concepts and it starts from the very initials that is when you're designing your database, when you're designing your database schema, that is the point from where all the optimizations are something that you have to keep thinking about, right? Designing the right database schema from the very start such that it is extendable, such that it is maintainable and it is scalable is very important. Things like doing the right database choice that for which particular part of the product which type of database is important. This is a very interesting skill that you need to develop because whenever you're going to work in any big tech, you will realize that all of their projects involve more than one database because of their different, different natures and different, different problems that they are optimized to solve. And apart from that, whatever database you choose, how you are actually storing the data there, what kind of policies you are going to build. For example, let's say there can be different, different use cases. For example, some databases you need to store some transactional type of data. Some databases you need to store maybe to store some unstructured data like some logs, right? These logs that you're going to store, maybe you do not need to uh, fetch them very frequently, right? Maybe just once in a month you want to fetch it or once in two months you will probably fetch it and so on. So based on their fetching pattern, right? You can decide what type of data storages you want because when you are going to deploy these databases on cloud, when you're going to use some cloud services to store this data, everything is going to matter in order to optimize your cost and in order to optimize your bills, right? That how frequently you are going to store, uh, like retrieve the data. If you know that pattern and you then take a decision of a data store that is going to optimize the cost for you, right? Then apart from that, how you are scaling your database whether you are keeping everything in a single DB or you are partitioning your database based on the right partitioning logic, right partitioning key. When you need replication, are you doing replication or not? Whether you are doing uh, cross region replication or not so that you have a more durable system, you have a more scalable system altogether, right? Sharding is a very important concept in databases when it comes to like how exactly you can shard the DBs, right? Also, you have to decide that based on your product, 
whether your database needs to be read heavy or write heavy because this is also going to drive a lot of decisions right in your replication strategies whether you are going to go with multi master strategy master slave architecture leaderless architecture and what not so there are a lot of things that you need to learn in database apart from just knowing how to store the data retrieve the data update the data and delete the data right these crud operations are basics of db but that's not just the end of it apart from that in databases you need to definitely learn things around writing pl sql scripts or whatever is the native database scripts that you uh, like whatever is the native database uh, query language you need to know how to write scripts in that because in production there will be use cases when you might have to write a custom pl sql logic to actually execute something directly on the database this was something that uh, we used to do in uh, linkedin as well in google we used to write these kind of sql scripts to fetch a lot of data and if anywhere you are going to work this is going to be extremely important so databases is a very wide topic databases is one of the most important things and it will take time for you to actually get a grasp of it because first of all there are so many databases to choose from and then whatever database you choose there is a lot of concept to learn i would highly recommend you guys to try to pick these kind of projects which gives you exposure to these new new type of database problems like how exactly you can make transactions which databases are having acid uh, compliance what databases do not support acid uh, as much as that what are the different isolation levels and what not so this is something that you definitely need to know now one more very important thing that you have to know in backend technologies is how exactly the cloud infrastructure is set up because whatever business logic you are going to have this is going to run on these different different cloud services like aws azure google cloud platform and what not nowadays apart from just having your dedicated servers having your business logic a lot of um, i would say problem statements can also be solved by keeping serverless functions in something like aws lambda apart from that how you are actually deploying your projects in what kind of machines you are keeping your project some machines are uh, i would say relatively lighter instances or weaker instances but maybe that suits your uh, use case maybe you want to have multiple such instances all together what kind of scaling strategies you are looking at right for example do you want to auto scale your system or do you want to keep horizontal scaling but with warm instances so that you do not have to waste time in auto scaling different different projects might be having different use cases for it then what type of storages you are keeping in the cloud that is also something very important what type of logs you are actually keeping in the cloud what type of monitoring you are setting up to make sure that you get right and relevant alerts uh, whenever something goes wrong in your cloud infrastructure right how exactly you are setting up the networking and security aspect of your um, i would say services let's say you are deploying your services so are the service communication um, i would say calls exposed to everybody on the internet or there are some only restricted ips that can access it right concepts around virtual private cloud apart from that keeping cross region replication strategies for different things keeping your servers in different different geographical region to ensure more scalability and reduce the latency of cross continent calls all of this is something that you need to learn because when you are working on some global projects and you have a huge amount of scale to actually work with these cloud technologies are very important it's not that every team will be having a dedicated cloud infrastructure engineer and a dedicated backend engineer a lot of times in startups you will find yourself only getting your hands dirty in setting up this cloud infrastructure taking the right decisions and then implementing everything end to end this is something that you have to definitely keep in mind now one most important thing i don't know whether you have already started working on this learning this or not is high level and low level design as a backend engineer it will be your responsibility to make sure that your code is as maintainable and as extendable as possible and for that you need to know a lot of low level design concepts including the solid principles design patterns and what not apart from that you also need to understand how exactly the high level design of your overall project that you are contributing to is working and you should be having the skill to document this in form of design docs where all of your high level design thoughts and all of your low level design thoughts are documented people can actually review it you can have design reviews people can actually comment it and based on these discussion you come up with the final design final coding implementation that is going to be most suitable and most stable for your project right once you start evolving as a backend engineer once you start becoming let's say a senior sd1 or let's say you start becoming sd2s and sd3s then you will realize the 
importance of these design aspects are very important if you take the right design decisions in the earlier stage of the project then the overall journey becomes relatively more smooth if you go to big tech like companies like amazon google microsoft linkedin these kind of companies here design documentation is something that is very very important for you to write and it's again a skill it's not just a simple document that you just write and just present it needs to have all the right set of details in the very right amount so that people can get all the important uh, things out of that document so understanding the low level design aspects doing code reviews of other people so that you can also review what other people act are actually writing are they following the right coding standards or not then designing the high level of the project then documenting all of this is a complete end to end design pillar that you need to develop in your skill set if you want to excel as a back end engineer last but not the least i believe an understanding of devops related concepts is very important for a back end engineer as well you need to know how exactly a ci cd pipeline is set up you need to know how exactly the instances are getting deployed and what not why because in case if a pipeline fails and your particular service jobs are dependent on that pipeline then probably you are going to be the one who is going to debug it you are going to be the one who is going to figure out why a pipeline is failing so if you know how pipelines are set up if you know how the pipelines are getting integrated if you know end to end details about any kind of a ci job or cd job that's going to be important because once you start working as a backend engineer you will be responsible for handling all the deployment schedules if the deployment fails you will be the one who will be also reviewing and debugging all of these pipelines so it becomes important to know how these pipelines work right depending on what kind of technologies your team use maybe you, your team use github actions maybe your team use azure pipelines or maybe your team use uh, jenkins whatever technology you are actually using right in order to write these ci cd pipelines in order to set up the cloud infrastructure this is something that you should start getting involved to you should start learning it you should start attending the meetings where all of these um, pipeline related stuff is actually set up all the ci stuff is set up all the cd stuff is set up because again you will be responsible for making sure that the ci pipelines goes through how they will go through if you have the proper linting in the project if you will be having proper test coverage in the project if you will be having proper test suits in the project then only the ci pipelines are going to go through if the build is working fine there is no latency that is being detected in the project so who will set up all of this along with the devops engineer you are going to be responsible as a backend engineer to set up all of this so devops is something that at least you should get an introductory knowledge on i definitely believe that and it can go take you like way way ahead in your career if you will be having knowledge of devops as well and that's what that's it for this particular video guys i hope you guys enjoyed this particular video and i hope you guys are able to relate to all of my thoughts in the part 1 as well as in this particular part 2 i have shared my thoughts that what are some of the important things that i def that i feel everybody should definitely know in order to learn uh, back end engineering and excel as a back end engineer there are more things as well like understanding of unit testing understanding of core business logic and what not but the set of things that i have told i believe are bare minimum and non negotiable for any back end engineer altogether let me know your uh, let me uh, uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below that what do you think about if there is anything that i missed i would be really happy if you can put that in the comment section as well that being said let's wrap this particular video here and we are going to meet soon in the next set of videos where we are going to talk about a lot of more things around your career and tech till then take care bye bye i am sanket singh signing off